Hello, this is Sam from Forum Labs. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to um, easily and quickly set up uh, surgical guides, uh, drill guides um, in our preform software, job setup software. Um, and before I start, uh, I just wanna mention a lot of the things I'm gonna be covering, uh, we actually have in some fantastic applications guides for not just our surgical guide resin, also um, all of our materials. And the best and quickest way to find all those, those written PDF applications guides or web-based applications guide is actually go to dental.forumlabs.com slash materials. You go by the material and then on that uh, material information, you'll see the applications guide. Really great for reference. Great to have just uh, on hand to get any of the specifics that I talk about in this video today. Um, and so a little bit of context here. The reason I'm making this video is because uh, the uh, DSP, the uh, dental support team, brought up a case with me in, in our recent meeting, and we went through it together. And, and uh, in troubleshooting it and, and sort of talking through, I thought it would have been, uh, the example would have been really great for a video like this. So that's why I'm making it. And so uh, before we go on, I just want to talk about a little bit of what we were trying to solve and, and what are some considerations in doing it. Um, so the, the customer was talking about having um, the sleeves of the surgical guide um, being inconsistent uh, in sort of fitment. And uh, while following orientation best practices is really the best way to give consistency, and I'm going to show you exactly how to do that, but fundamentally, uh, angulation of the hole for the sleeve or, or the, you know, the implant uh, guide uh, hole, it should be in theory as... Uh, perpendicular to the build platform as possible. To explain this another way, if you were to take a, say the center point of this uh, cylindrical hole in this guide, it should be absolutely straight up and down from the build platform as possible. And why is that? Uh, because, you know, 3D printing prints layer by layer. Uh, so, you know, either 50 or 100 micron layer at a time. And if you have angulation, the surfaces of that hole start to have steps to them jagged edges, which can, in some cases, especially if you're dealing with really uh, tight to begin with, you know, offsets to the sleeves, you know, can, can be too tight. You know, you could print a case that's set up like what I'm showing, and then one that's set up with 15 degrees angulation, and you could have two completely fit, different fitments, and that's why. Uh, and it's really apparent when you go into the slicing tool. So I'm looking, I'm going to grab my view tool here on the right and zoom in. And now I've got my slicing tool here. And you can see, so this is virtually printing the job. And you can use your mouse to click and drag, or you can use the up and down arrows to go slice by slice. This right now is set on our surgical guide resin at 50 microns. And you can see through the whole slice, this hole is perfectly um, perpendicular to the build platform. There's no angulation. There's not going to be any stepping with this uh, drill hole uh, or sleeve hole, I guess, because the, the drill kit is actually going to go into the sleeve itself. So that's really what we're striving for. There's a really, really easy way to do it, even with multiple implants, and I'm going to show you how to do it. Uh, so let me, I'm going to bring my slicer back to sort of normal view. I'm going to turn off this, uh, this guide. Oh, one more thing. Uh, ideally, with this, this hole uh, in mind, a secondary consideration, so I've got the side view here, so I use my arrows to snap down to a perfect side view. You want, if you could draw a sort of uh, occlusal plane through this guide, you want that to be as parallel to the build platform as possible. Uh, that we just shown in testing is the best and most accurate way to print these parts. So sleeve insertion direction or sleeve hole is primary. Secondarily is to look at the overall angle of the part don't really go above if, if you know if this is an imaginary line we're probably pretty parallel actually but maybe a couple degrees you know don't go above like 15 degrees 20 degrees angulation you'll start to get um, you know less than ideal fitments on some cases but you know some people message me on this stuff and be like I get perfect fits and I do 45 degrees but to each his own that's what I've seen in testing and we've done a lot of testing on this material especially uh, so let me turn on the four examples I got here for everyone and this is a bit of like a cooking show I got them all uh, wrapped up here in my uh, model list, so I just turned these back on. Here are the four guides I'm going to show. Uh, first, I'll show probably the simplest and easiest, uh, the one I just had, because it's a single site implant. Um, so I'm going to take my um, orientation button over here on the left hand side of Preform, click that open, select base, one of my favorite tools in Preform, click on that, and I'm actually going to select or click on the surface, the flat surface of the guide itself. This is typically at a 90 degree angle from the, uh, so the the hole generated in the guide. So if you click on that, it snaps it down perfectly perpendicular to 
the build platform. Single site, you check out that, you know, the angle of the guide, yeah, it's a little bit, actually from the anterior, it is a little bit sort of angled, but I would take that perfect perpendicularness over this amount of angle any day. If it was if it was like double this, I would say, okay, maybe I pick the in-between to get the best results here, maybe angle it a little bit, but for this one, done deal. Uh, next, we're gonna use that same technique on um, a little bit of a trickier case here. This is a three unit, uh, three site implant um, uh, job here. But you can see here after clicking this flat surface, a little bit of angulation difference here. And if you notice, I'm clicking on different parts of the guide's flat uh, top surface of this part. And you can see it's, it's tweaking it just a hair. Uh, and you just pick the one that's sort of like what looks the best to you. So this one's perfectly um, perpendicular. These are less so than on those other clicks. So let me just show an example. Uh, this one is a little less ideal because this one is really good, but then these two are way, like way more off than if I was here. This is the one I'd pick the least angulation between the three of them. You know, you can check out check it out from different views or whatever, but that would look good to me, in my opinion. The next one here is the uh, uh, two site uh, uh, implant guide here. I believe this one's really simple, and then the last one I have is a little trickier. Oh no, this is the tricky one. Okay, so I've snapped it down. Uh, before I go any further, I'm going to go back out of my select base mode because I want to isolate this one. I want to turn off these other models so we can see everything clearly. Okay, so I'm going to take my view tool on the right again. Click, uh, it doesn't really matter if it's, you know, looking at it from a different angle or whatever, but select base again. And you can tell these implants are quite a bit uh, angled differently, right? So either side you pick, you're going to have one be uh, angled quite a bit versus the other. What I would do in this case is I would start from the top view. After I've got it snapped down like that, get your um, either the rearmost part of the the the, uh, the guide itself, so the two rearmost molars, if that's the case, or angle or, or position your two implant locations on one of these lines, uh, and it'll make sense in a second. Why? Then same thing on the view tool on the right, uh, or actually I want to look at it from the back because. What we're doing is we're trying to take the in-between between these two angulations, right? So if we snap back down to the bottom, this one is, this one's perfect, this one's way off on the left, right? So we go back to that back view and I'm just gonna grab my rotation sphere. Now that we've got it positioned so I can look at it perfectly from the back, I can just grab this and take the in-between, just like that. A little bit of a rotation there. And now look, they're pretty much even on both sides. That's what you want, right? You want the guides on the sleeve to fit the same on both, you know, between the two um, and across other one, all the other guides as well. This would do very well in my opinion. Um, th this angulation is not very major at all. And now you're not gonna get differences between the two. Boom, done. All right, moving on. Uh, so I did, I think three is my last one here. I'm a little bit out of order, but this is uh, another one. Uh, I'm going to, uh, again, select base grab one of my implant, uh, the tops of uh, that, that uh, the, the sleeves area here. This one worked out perfect. So I just clicked on the bottom surface here. All three of these are absolutely perfect. There must've been no uh, sinus, you know, interference or nerve or anything. It's, it's an upper probably. Yeah, it's an upper. Um, so this one's great. So that's done. Uh, generate supports from here. Last thing I'd mention, and this is a pretty counterintuitive point. Um, actually two things. I wanna show you how to set up the parts and position them so they're they're optimal from the get-go but uh before i do that before i forget um it's a little bit counterintuitive but i actually think and like surgical guide 100 micron settings better than 50 and uh, you know i i have some accuracy some science behind it but just in my opinion if you're using 50 and you're getting any sort of less than desirable results and you're doing all the techniques that I'm saying, try 100. It's faster, I think it's better, honestly. So 100 microns is what I recommend. Certainly accurate enough for everything you're doing with surgical guides all day. Really very little difference in accuracy um, between the 50 and the 100 micron settings. Let's go with 100, I, I think they're better, uh, better results. Um, so before I uh, support, now that I've got these all into the correct orientation, I'll do a little Tetris. The last part I want to show is I usually like to do Tetris before I do supports. So get them all sort of like set up in their general, um, you know, close together like this. And then when I'm looking at setting up a job, especially not filling the build platform, try to, so this is a top view. Again, I use my view tool to get here on the right-hand side, looking straight down. 
I try to, this is the front of the printer, the mixer side, take and position my parts in a group towards the, the front middle. Like if there are two lines here, so these last two blocks here next to the mixer side and the last two blocks on the other side from the mixer, I like to position my parts something like this. Even a little bit to the front, this is sort of uh, my sort of sweet spot. Uh, you know, take this all with a grain of salt. This is from my experiences and, and the testing and everything I, I've seen. Um, but try it. This is the way I would set this up. I would just generate, go into my supports menu, auto generate from here. Boom, done, print, moving on. Okay, I hope this is helpful. It probably went a little longer than I wanted here, but uh, it, I hope it was good information. If there's any other uh, of these guides and videos you'd like uh, me to do on any cases or topics or anything else with form labs, uh, 3D printing and dental, I'm here for you. Thanks again. This is Sam at Form Labs. Have a great day.